Hey guys, how you doing? Part four of the DIY solar pool series here. I want to show you the electrical connections from the solar panel to the box here. I went ahead and mounted a couple nights ago, did this connection. Let's take a closer look here. So from the panel, MC4 connectors to a uh, solar cable, positive and negative. I went ahead and cut the ends of the solar cable and brought them up through the box here, as you can see. So let's just look at the uh, components in here and I'll show you the signal flow. So basic components here, we got a relay, a buck boost converter, a PWM controller. We have a potentiometer right here that goes into the PWM controller and then an off on switch. So what happens here is solar comes in and negative goes to the relay, positive goes to the switch, off on, then it flows to the relay here. Now what this relay does is it determines the voltage for the buck boost. So it will turn on on a certain number. I have it set to about 17 or 18 volts. That's when this uh, relay will turn on and power the buck boost converter. What the buck boost converter is going to do is going to keep constant voltage. No matter if the panel is putting out 20 volts or it's putting out 10 volts, it's going to be set to a constant voltage. I have it right now set to 13 volts. I'm inside right now. So nothing is really working, I don't have enough voltage, but I'm gonna go ahead and fix that in a couple minutes. From the buck boost, it goes down to the PWM controller. At that point, I have a switch here, a potentiometer, and this is nice because I can control the voltage of the motor here, or the bilge pump in this case, for this setup. Now technically, I don't need this PWM controller. I could just control the voltage off the buck boost converter, but it is nice to have this right here because I can fine tune the motor just by going back and forth. So let's go ahead and hook this up, get this going, and show you how this is gonna work with the bilge pump. All right, guys, I wanna show you a couple things here I missed from the previous description. I also have fuses here in line. There's a fuse on the input from the solar and a fuse on the output from the PWM. Uh, controller here so everything's fused in and out so I've gone ahead now and disconnected my solar I'm going to go ahead and use my bench power supply here hook this in to the components here and provide power instead of the solar panel but this is a nice little power supply about $50 on Amazon it's uh, 0 to 30 volts provides up to 5 amps constant current constant voltage really like having a bench power supply and uh, it's worked out really well in small electronic projects here. Especially as I get going, I learn more about electronics and want to do more things. So let's take a look here how I have this hooked up. Basically, I'm going positive to the positive side and negative to the negative side here, bypassing the solar right now. Uh, since I'm here, I'll show you this is the bilge pump that I'm using for the solar pool heater. This is what everything is powering. The Seaflow 500 gallon per minute. This is basically a knockoff of uh, the real pumps, quite a bit cheaper for this. I went this route for the uh, bilge pump there. And that's connected through this ASE connector right here. So when it comes out of the PWM controller, it's going to this connector here and then to the bilge pump. And I've used uh, marine grade connections here that uh, when you put heat on it, it seals up. And then I went ahead and used this liquid tape and put two coats on that for my connection. So wire tight everything's good to go and there's 18.9 volts coming out of the power supply the relay says 18.6 if we get really close to the uh, buck boost converter it's really hard to see here but it says 18.8 .8. so roughly all the same here and the buck boost is actually going to have it set to output at 14 volts so that's the constant current so no matter if this panel is producing 18 volts or 10 or 11 volts, it's always going to produce 14 volts. Provide stable voltage and current for this PWM controller. And then I can fine tune the motor off the uh, potentiometer right there. Just want to mention real quick about BTUs and uh, running this fast versus slow. It's all the same BTUs and I can't change the laws of physics. So if I run it really fast, I'm um, putting the same amount of BTUs in as if I was running it slow, but by running it slow, yeah, I know that I'm running nice hot waters. There's kind of a uh, qualitative aspect and psychological aspect. All right, so let's put some juice through this baby here and show you how this all works right now. So I have 20 volts coming out of the power supply, 
and the relay is seeing 19.7 volts. So this relay is set to turn on at 17 volts and turn off at 11.5 volts. And the buck boost converter is gonna be set to 14 volts. So this BWM is always gonna see 14 volts. So let's go ahead and turn this on and start things up here. So everything's on, I'm just gonna go ahead and get some juice on the potentiometer here. You can hear the bilge pump. So when it's up all the way, it's running at 14 volts. And then again, I can fine tune and turn it down and so forth. But the real beauty of the system is, I'm gonna adjust the voltage here. So the solar panel is cranking at 20 volts. Let's say a cloud comes along and drops the voltage. So let's say a cloud comes along and we drop down to 12 volts here. Okay, 12 volts. So the relay is seeing it as 11.7 and the buck boost is staying at 13.95 and the PWM is still seeing constant voltage. So that's the reason. So at this point, the buck boost converter is actually boosting voltage here before it was stepping it down. Now I have that relay set to 11.5. So let's go down just a little bit more, see when the system shuts off here. All right, so I'm at 11.6 here, and the relay is under 11.5, so it shut off. Let's go ahead and turn things back up here. I have to go above 17 for the relay to turn back on. And it just turned on. So that's the uh, heart of the system here for this setup here. Now when I get the panel outside, I'll have to tweak with this and figure out what's the really starting and ending voltage I want to be at. It all depends too on the time of day. You know, do I want the system shutting off at seven o'clock? You know, what's the voltage of the solar panel at 7 p.m.? Um, what's the voltage at nine or 10 o'clock in the morning when I want it to turn on? So next step is to uh, make my wire connections here, bring this outside, start experimenting and get some water flowing. All right guys, let's take a look at the DIY solar pool heater here in action. This thing is cranking out some heat. It's a beautiful day. It's about uh, 75 degrees northwestern Vermont here. Check out the temperatures here. We are about uh, 170 degrees. This thing has been off for most of the day. Went to work, just got back from work. It's about 5.30 at night. We got smoke coming out here. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Ambient temperature about 74. Let's put it up to here and see what we got. Let's just maybe get hot. You guys see that? About 135 degrees. It's pretty hot. Here's the back side. Got the speed control here. What's nice about it is the motor is right next to the wall of the pool. So as I turn it up, can hear the motor running so this is about uh, you know two-thirds of the way over let's take a look how fast the water's running it's pretty good right there see that it's nice to have the uh, speed control electronic here not bad at all not bad at all so I initially had the really hot water coming off it I think it was mostly because of the um, wire sitting in there. It was really hot. Now it's been running for a few minutes. Let's go ahead and take a look here. This thing is still keeping pretty good temperature, about 165. So 165 inside the box. And let's just touch this real quick. It's kind of lukewarm now. All right guys, it's a couple days later, Saturday morning about 11 o'clock. This has been out in the sun for a couple hours. The sun's been in and out, it's been sort of overcast. Now it's starting to clear. Temperature is about, well it's approaching 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So I wanna show you some real data, some real performance numbers here. What I showed you before was piping hot water coming out and that was mostly due to this being off for the entire day and just having some hot water inside. So the real numbers here um, are quite a bit lower, but still uh, 
producing some good water for uh, heat and BTUs. So let's check this out here. Um, it's coming out about uh, 85 degrees. Sorry for the wind here. The pool right now is about 73 degrees. That's what our other thermometer says. It's fooling around the pool, Mr. Sharky. And here, you put it under here. This is coming out about 85 degrees. So a rise of about 12 degrees in temperature for your delta. All right, guys, so there we go, DIY solar pool here. Just want to throw out a quick uh, shout out and thank you to KVUSMC. I'll put a link to uh, his DIY solar pool heater in the upper corner here of this video. My design is based on his design. I just did a few modifications, uh, added insulation, and did the electronic speed control. So just want to throw that shout out to him and uh, credit his work that he did on his. Mine is very similar to his. A uh, couple things that uh, I would do a little bit differently at this point is I'm not quite convinced that using heavy wall irrigation line is the best pipe so far. I think I'm going to build one more of these. I'm going to try using a half inch PEX tube and go with that and see if that makes any difference in uh, how fast and how hot the actual pipe gets. Not convinced also that using 200 feet is the best um, because I'm covering 100 feet of the pipe inside there and only 100 feet is being exposed to sunlight. So something to experiment with and as far as the electronic speed control, a um, couple issues with that is that when you're actually moving water, it takes a lot more power. So in my previous clips, I was, you know, turning it up full at 14 volts off the buck boost converter. It's only taking like a half of amp of power. But when you're doing it, actually moving water and working that pump, it takes more like 1.5 amps. So sometimes this doesn't run because there's not enough power from the solar panel to uh, actually as far as amps to to run the motor so uh, I think uh, at the very bare minimum you probably don't need the buck boost converter you could probably just do it off the relay in the PWM you could also just go directly solar panel into the PWM controller speed controller all right guys just want to say one other thing that uh, drives me a little nuts here is the placement of my control box I'm gonna move it over here because at night this is kind of self-facing if I walk in front of that panel it disrupts the current flow into the uh, buck boost converter and it kind of resets things. So I'm going to move over there and then I can tweak the potentiometer over there. Just want to show you one thing on the setup here that I came up with as far as the pump. Right now the pump is pumping, it's going to interrupt it for a minute. Is I went ahead and used this rubber cloth that uh, goes in your kitchen cupboards to protect the cupboards. What I did here was I wrapped that around and used rubber bands so none of the like, metal clamps are exposed and won't rip the liner and no one's going to cut themselves on it because they're kind of sharp. So I went ahead and did that and it seems to be working pretty well. Put that back in. Should be good to go. All right, guys. So there we go. Sorry for the wind here. DIY solar pool here. Have about $350 into this project. It's well worth it. I'm going to keep... Uh, experimenting with it working with it maybe build another one and uh go forth from there thanks for watching guys you know what to do like subscribe leave a comment ask a question do my best to get back to you uh thanks for watching it's appreciated we'll catch you next time